Don't waste your breath, Smoker. The government doesn't want the truth to get out. After all, what would people think if they found out that a bunch of pirates saved Alabaster? Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down every one and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we will be taking a look at the ever awesome marine, Hina. Hina is a tall, slim, and all around rather serious looking member of the marine organization. She is immediately identifiable by her character trait of always referring to herself in the third person. Now this is odd in English, but it goes a step further in Japanese, where nouns and pronouns can often be omitted entirely from sentences. Although in Japan, young children tend to refer to themselves in this way, and it's seen as quite cute. However, Hina makes no attempt to be cute, and is always rather stoic and serious when engaging in this habit, making it quite comical and endearing. Hina also displays many qualities of natural leadership. For example, she is very calm, calculating, and highly knowledgeable in regards to battle tactics both on land and at sea. So while Hina first officially appeared in the Django's Dance Paradise cover story, she was first properly introduced in the series at the tail end of the Alabaster arc, after Sir Crocodile had been defeated. At this point in the series, she held the rank of Captain, which was the same rank held by another prominent Marine, Smoker. In fact, Hina and Smoker are actually longtime friends having joined the Marines at the same time. As such, Hina is well accustomed to Smoker's troublemaking personality and actions, and has even, on occasion, helped him get out of situations that could have seen him fired. In general, Hina is much more willing to unquestioningly follow the lead of the top branch, and even urge Smoker to take the medals and promotion when headquarters attempted to give him credit for defeating Sir Crocodile. Although Smoker is far from the only troublemaker that Hina seems to uncharacteristically tolerate. At the time of her introduction in the series, Hina had two primary subordinates, Django and Fullbody, both of whom were former antagonists in the series. Now these two went on to form quite a goofy friendship, and at one stage, they both ended up being absolutely smitten by their superior officer Hina. As a result, the two are constantly attempting to woo her to no avail. Most of the time, Hina simply ignores them, but she also shows great tolerance for Django and Fullbody's other shenanigans, which frequently include dancing and self-inflicted hypnosis. Following the events of Alabaster, Hina attempted to apprehend the Straw Hat Pirate as they were departing from the island. However, she was tricked into pursuing Bon Clay, who used his Devil Fruit abilities to take on Luffy's appearance. As a result, Hina was forced into combat with Bon Clay's crew, and the Straw Hats were able to escape her grasp. And while the conclusion to this conflict was never shown, later on it is revealed that Hina quite comfortably defeated Bon Clay, although her Devil Fruit more than likely played a huge part in her success. Hina ate the Ori Ori no Mi, a Paramecia-type fruit that gives the user the ability to morph their body into iron shackles and bars, which instantly bind all those who touch them. Ori means cage in Japanese, and the fruit has been translated as the cage cage fruit in dubs of the anime. Currently, this fruit has not displayed any particular weakness outside of your stock standard devil fruit catches, although if the user isn't careful, then it can be unintentionally used to bind allies. As of right now, it's unclear whether or not it is possible for a person to escape their bindings once they are caught in the fruit, making the Ori Ori no Mi very potentially one of the more powerful devil fruits in existence. Ina's next appearance in the series would be during Miss Golden Week's Operation Meet Baroque Works cover story. Hina was vacationing with Django and Fullbody on a resort island named Kyuko, and during her vacation she noticed a group of ex-Baroque Works agents. Hina then went on to successfully capture Miss Valentine, however Bon Clay intervened, freeing Miss Valentine but getting caught himself in the process. During the story, Hina also succeeds in capturing Mr. Three, and as a result of her actions, both Mr. Three and Bon Clay are sent to Impel Down, setting up the events of that arc. From here, Hina would be summoned to Marineford in order to participate in the Paramount War. The most notable action in the conflict was her brief skirmish with Luffy, whom she attempted to capture. However, Luffy's gear second speed was too fast for Hina, who quietly admitted defeat. However, she did manage to accidentally capture Django and Fullbody. Hina did survive the war, however, she would not be heard from again until well past the time skip, appearing at the island of Alabasta in order to escort the Nefertari family to the Reverie. Hina would then reappear once more during the Reverie arc, speaking to Garp and some other Marine associates. Some more fun facts about Hina. At some stage during the two year time skip, Hina climbed through the ranks of the Marines to become a Rear Admiral. Hina briefly featured in One Piece Film Z, although it was a non-speaking role. In fact, it was a non-anything role. All she did was stand beside Fleet Admiral Sakazuki and silently listened as other more prominent characters discussed matters at hand. 
However, during the film we did also receive a glimpse of Hina's early days as a marine. Hina's birthday happens to be on March 3rd, which is a Japanese holiday known as Hina Matsuri, or Girls' Day, which coincides nicely with her name. And finally, a truly useless fact. Rather than the standard red or blue epaulets worn by most marines, Hina prefers to drape her shoulders in a signature light blue colour. And that pretty much does it for Hina. If you enjoyed this video then feel free to like, favourite or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel then please feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. Finally, please do comment with who, what or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.